All right, everybody, we are here with our new July bio. We are live on location at uh, the Moore Racing in Glen Helen. And with me, we have the driver of the 1690, Matt Krevling of the Caveman Motorsports. Matt, welcome. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. It's a great opportunity. I love what you guys are doing with the uh, with the with the site and, and coverage of the guys. Ah, awesome. Well, I appreciate the feedback on it. We we just love coming out here and being a part of everything with with you guys. So you just got done with your qualifying lap. Let's talk about that real quick. How was qualifying? Uh, it it was good. Track was real slick. Um, a little bit of water, a lot of soft stuff. Made it real slick. And when you're coming off of a, a DNF for not having steering and losing your brakes. You're a little timid with your brakes and your Confidence steering. Confidence level's not there real, yeah. all that much, yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. So eh, I don't think we, we didn't really lay down a heater, but you know, the, the show is this afternoon. Okay, right. That's absolutely right. I and mean, qualifying is one thing, but everybody, when the race green flag drops and the race goes, that's, that's when it really counts, right? Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about your car. So the car is a cat fab chassis. Uh, that's Kenny Thatcher out of Vegas. Okay. Um, motor is George Jimenez. Trans is done by Dave Foltz. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we I got a lot of people who, a lot of partners who help out with, you know, helping get us to the track with things that I'm not capable of doing myself. Okay. Um, you know, predominantly, I do all the prep, I do all the work on the car, but some things I just can't do. Um, Adam Householder does my shocks for me. Uh, he's he's been great, super helpful. All, all the right. all the partners we use are are amazingly helpful, and uh, I, I really appreciate everything they do for us. It's good good to have a good team behind you with vendors and teammates and and everything helping keep these cars on the track. Yeah, my team is is amazing to me. We call it our race family. Uh -huh. We uh, uh, you know we just genuinely have a good time. We hang out outside the races, but. Uh, yeah, man, I can't, I can't say enough about my team and sure. how, I mean, heck, we've had babies around the race schedule. You know, <laughs> that's the reality. Uh, when, when I got married, let me tell you, I went through all the race schedules to make sure that I wasn't going to fall on an anniversary date for one of the races. So I completely understand what you're saying there. Yeah, my, my son, my wife and I's agreement uh, was she had to be out of the hospital. <laughs> and uh, I think if I remember right, we raced one week before my son was born. Oh, wow. That's still cutting it pretty close. It was cutting it close. Yeah, that's good. We were good. That's awesome. So, cool. All right. Not a problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. What got you into racing and how old were you? So, I started racing, I want to say my first race was 2007. If I remember correctly, 2006, 2007. Okay. But the real love of the sport came, I want to say about 1989 okay. is really when this sport and motorsports in general became what I really wanted to do. Um, as a kid, you, we all go through, you know, I want to be a national, I want to be a firefighter. Right. I always wanted to be a race car driver. And that stuck with me since probably about eight, nine years old. Okay. And the, the real thing to it was the Fireworks 250 out in Barstow. I was about nine years old, and I remember Walker and Ivan and, and all, the, all the, the heroes of our sport from before. Right. And distinctly, I remember we were out by Slash X and watching Ivan and Walker, Ivan Stewart and Walker Evans just battling it out through there. And I thought this is the most amazing thing right. I could possibly do with my life. Um, took a lot, a lot of years, life gets in the way, yep. um, you know, and when I, the opportunity presented itself, I bought myself a class nine car and we went racing, not knowing at all what we were doing. So that's, that's the story of this. Yeah. And so was your class nine car, the first race car you'd ever, yep. uh, raced in? Was it? So I raced. I weaseled my way into a driver's seat of a single seat nine car about a year before I bought my car. Okay. Um, and that race, it, it was a blast. There, there was a long story behind it. We did horribly. Um, you know, I was the second driver. It was back when we did a 500 mile race. Okay. I was driving the car second, and uh, I picked up the car. We were we were running last place, but I, I thought for sure I'm going to catch everybody. Yep. 
Oh, so, no doubt uh, about it. <laughs> right. And about 25 miles in, I, I, I rolled the car um, and I was going into the night and all my lights were just wasted. My radio's rate wasted. And all anybody heard was I rolled the car and end the transmission. Nobody knows anything. Uh -huh. And I was out there and I, I rolled, but I rolled back onto my wheels. So I was like, okay, this is great. So I keep going. And right about that time, two unlimited cars come down, split me, and I can't see anything. I mean nothing. <laughs> and I just, I just keep going straight. And, and a little while, I, I'd say I probably went about, I don't know, three miles or so. And I'm going, and I'm like, wow, this, this is a really straight road. This is kind of weird. No pre-run or anything. I've never done this before. And, and I see some lights off in the distance. And I'm like, oh, wow, look at those idiots. Those guys are lost. And then I see some more lights off in the distance and some more. And then I realized it was this idiot who was lost. <laughs> I stop the car. I get out the car. I'm kind of freaking out, panicking. I don't know what to do. I get back in the car and I, I you know, I just go, I'm just going to go straight for those lights. And, um, you know, it was just a comedy of errors, that whole race. But it was right then and there, I knew I had to go buy my own right. car, and, and we're doing this. Awesome. And now you haven't looked back. Nope. Nope, not at all. It, the stories that come from this adventure, mm -hmm. uh, they're the most, some of the most priceless memories I have. Right. You know, and, that, and that goes back to when I was a kid uh, and the love of this. We grew up, like a lot of us, we grew up around the desert, motorcycles, dirt bikes, Baja bugs. For us, my dad had a Baja bug. I learned to drive in that Baja bug. Um, you know, and we just spent time out in the, the desert with adventures, chasing right. mines, this, that, the other thing. And, and those are just us, the memories that I have that I want, I really want for my family to have, um, my friends to have. Um, a big reason we did the, you know, last year we did a, a race outside our norm. We did the Gold Rush uh, Legacy Race. And a big reason for that was to give my team the opportunity to do some stuff that we don't normally do. I'm fortunate enough, I've been involved with a lot of teams. I've, I've raced Mexico, I've raced Nevada, I've raced, I've been part of Chase Crews. But I wanted to give my team the opportunity to see more than just what we do out here in sure. uh, Barstow and Lucerne. And, and everybody had an epic time. They keep blasting me to go back. Awesome. So how long do you have this car? So I bought this car, let's see, in 2019. Okay. So I bought the car in 2019. Uh, I immediately, I was still racing my nine car uh, and I stripped it down, rebuilt it completely. Um, and we debuted it in 2020, okay. uh, which was a terrible, terrible year to debut a race car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's first race. I, we were way behind on our motor and we, you know, at the time we, we built the motors in house. My dad was the motor builder until he passed away. Um, and we were struggling getting the car to run. I mean, just even run. Uh -huh. uh, and we finally got it. We got a little bit of insight from from some people who kind of steered us in the right direction to get the car jetting running running moderately well. And uh, yeah, I, I put a whopping four miles on the car before I jumped in it to go race it. Um, and that was uh, yeah, that was 2020. So, like I said, guys, we are here on location, so I hope the uh, all the exhaust noises isn't drowning us out too bad. But uh, we're gonna keep going best we can out here yes, so um you talked a little bit about you know the, the memories out here uh making the memories with you and the team and everything what's what's one of your most memorable races that's a tough that's a tough question because there's a, a lot of there's a lot of great memories uh, one big one that comes to mind would be the and, and I always kind of go back to this because the Fireworks 250 was the race that got me into this. 
So for me, it was like my white whale race, the, the Freedom 250 back uh -huh. before we did the Glen Helen. And there was one year that, uh, you know, and we, we were running good. We were running for a championship. And I, uh, the race, we got into the race and I made a mistake and I got the car stuck uh, on a hillside. Uh, first lap so the rest of the race i'm playing catch up i'm trying and I'm, I'm mad like and i don't usually get mad behind the wheel but i was mad um because that's my race dang it yeah. i want to win this race and anyways we, we go i'm mad and i'm driving and i worked myself back up to around second place and we we're having all just issues the whole time flat tire here or this here we still managed to hold on to second place going into late in the race last lap I have, uh, we start to have a, a electrical problem, you know, GPS going crazy, radios going crazy. We're shutting everything off and, uh, we don't know what's going on, but dang it. We only got like 15 more miles to right. get through. And we, I made a poor line choice going up a hill and we were in Barstow and there was a basically single track and there was a log jam in there. and I watched a truck go up it and I was like oh man he's he might get stuck and I followed him anyways and I got stuck well I didn't want to sit there with my foot on the clutch and the brake so I shut the car off put it in gear so I could just sit there because we were waiting there was nowhere to go uh -huh. and I'm waiting you know waiting for recovery and it turned out I didn't know him at the time but it was Raptor Lou who helps out the series he finally comes and get I go to refire the car Car won't fire. I got no electrical. So he yanked, they yanked me up this hill in the process, ripped my front bumper off. Ugh. And partially my fault, because like I said, I was driving pissed, mm -hmm. you know. And in my entire career, I this was the one and only race I've ever hit anybody out of frustration. Frustration. And, and it bit me in, right. bit me hard. So it damaged my bumper, rips my bumper off, which has all my lights on it. We get up to the top of this hill. He he takes off, and we're but we managed to bump start the car while we were on the strap. Sure. So we get to the top. I leave the car running. I have to get out. I got to figure out something to do with the lights. So there happened to be a ten car that was also broke down. So I run over them. Hey, you guys got zip ties, duct tape? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. Take what you need. So I zip tie my light bar back on the car and throw away something else. I'm like, okay, we're good. And those guys are finishing up. And at this point, it's about 1.30 in the morning. Um, and I go to say, hey, thanks guys, appreciate your help. And my wedding ring flies off in the middle of the desert. And I stop as I'm getting in the car. My dad was riding with me and, and he goes, what's wrong? I go, my wedding ring. And my dad's sitting there with his foot on the brake because we're kind of on a hill. Yeah. He's like, well, hurry up. <laughs> I managed to find the wedding ring. Oh, wow. Yeah. Put it back on, jump in the car. We get going. We go about three more miles. I hit I hit a something. Light, all the zip ties come off. Light bar comes off. Car shuts off. Oh, man, at this point, we're only nine miles from the finish. We just want to get there. So my, my team comes out. And we're like, look, we, we got a shorted out battery or something. So we disconnect the battery. And my, my buddy Jason comes up with this brilliant idea. And he makes a little pigtail, takes a 12-volt Milwaukee battery to power the car. They push start us. And they go, you got about seven minutes on the time limit. And I pulled in 30 seconds before the time limit. Oh, man. Still managed to finish fourth. Wow. Well, yeah. That's, that's awesome. That's that is fantastic it's so that experience yeah that is one of the yeah. bigger yeah memories uh you know and like i said earlier that this whole thing has got there's so many great memories so many great stories some good right. some bad uh, um they're all great campfire stories so yeah, absolutely for sure so what what's your ideal race your track with which ones do you like to go to and and how does that like compared to your type of driving style? So unfortunately for me, uh, my better 
my skill set is more akin to the rougher and tighter technical courses. Okay. Um, it, it's really unfortunate because I, <laughs> it hurts. Yeah. It hurts a lot and as I'm getting older. Um, but we go to Barstow. Um, huh? I really, I, I, I hate Barstow because it's Barstow, but I love Barstow because I usually perform very well. I've, okay. I've won quite a few races in Barstow. Um, you managed to win a 1600 race in, in Barstow. Excellent. Um, so, and then also the longer, the longer style races are more, definitely more my forte than a short sprint type race. Yeah, you're more of a, 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 a finish, endurance finishing racing than the, a sprint racer. I, I feel the same way about that. Yeah. Yeah. It takes, takes quite the animal to, to leave their foot on the gas and just drive balls out the whole time. To go the pace that some of these guys go is uh, yeah, it's mind blowing. It is, yeah. And when you're trying to run up front with those guys, it's it's scary. Yeah, quite frankly, it is it, scary. It, it can be absolutely. So uh, let's uh, let's change a little bit here. Tell me a little an interesting fact, a fun fact about you that maybe somebody may not know. So. All right, here's a here's a super random, strange, fun fact. Love it, love it. Uh, you remember the ice cream parlor Ferrells? Yep. Okay, they they'd have ice cream challenges. Okay, okay. I like where this is going. I I have twice won blue ribbons at Ferrells for eating what's known as their pig trough. Oh my god! Which gosh. was this ginormous banana split. Yeah. That those ribbons hang with my tr racing trophies. Love it. Yeah, it's super weird. Yeah, that's great. But that is something only my wife and my daughter know. And now, <laughs> now the world the rest, knows. Now the rest of the world. Uh, yeah, you I'm, guys I'm are welcome. I'm a big fat pig. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fat pig. That's what the, the ribbon says. Right on. Then do you have any pre-race routines? What, what gets you started before the green flag dro drops? So really, it starts on Friday. Okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to lie. The first hour of this routine is me pretty much staring at my car, stressing out over what did I miss. I think just a lot of people can relate to that. Yep. Yep. Um, just just like this morning, and you well know, I had to bleed brakes. Yeah. Um, but that was me staring at the car last night, going, "Oh man, I'm not sure if those brakes are good." Um, they were good though. They were good. All right, good. brakes good. worked. Yeah. Thank you. Um, they, but it starts there, and, and once that kind of fades, I like to have some personal time, alone time. So kind of when the, you know, normally our races we camp at, uh -huh. I like to take a little time or I just, everything's winding down. I go in the trailer. Uh, if I pre-ran, I'll review my pre-run notes, but I don't really have a whole lot of time and ability to go pre-running. So a lot of times I'll review the course map. Mm -hmm. And I spend 15, 20 minutes just kind of going through stuff, uh, areas that I know. And then I very specifically lay out my race gear. I am, I am a little OCD, um, but I specifically lay out my race gear for the next morning. And, uh, you know, come morning, uh, again, I like to have that alone time. Before everybody's up, I like to be able to sit, drink my coffee. Decompress and a little bit, just yep. Decompress. Mm -hmm. um, and so, a weird little tidbit, and this kind of stems from. Uh, so I was, I was a hockey player growing up, and uh, played at a pretty high level. But I developed this weird uh, thing where everything left has to go first. So my left skate would go first. My right skate would go next. I'd tie my left skate. Tie my right skate. Interesting. Left shin pad, right shin pad. I've carried that through with my race gear. Uh huh. Left sock, right sock. Left leg, right leg. Left shoe, right shoe. Uh, wow. it, and it's a weird little thing, but crazy. The crazy part to me is, and not that it really makes a lick of difference in the end. It right. really doesn't. Right. But if I knowingly skip any of these steps, it, it plays. Huh havoc on me yeah it's, Interesting. it's really weird and the funny the funniest part to me though is it's not the left left or right it's the stressing out on the car the night before sure because 
when everybody's telling me, don't worry about it, you're good, everything's fine, and I try to tune it out, that's when problems happen. Yeah. Get out and I go 40 miles into a race. and it, One probably has absolutely nothing to do with the other one. It's just, it's just it's, how it, it happens. It's just how it happens. Yeah. Well, Matt, I want to thank you for joining uh, our 1600 family and, and doing this interview with us. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, at this point, do you want to thank your teammates, your, your sponsors and stuff? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, sponsors, BNR Buggies, uh, USA Wheels, uh, they always help me out, keep me in these wheels. They're great wheels. Um, like I said, our partners, you know, um, Adam Householder, George Jimenez, Dave and Daniel Foltz. Uh, ben Wright has always been a huge help, and Mike Arnold, MA Concepts, he's been a huge help with uh, some of the recent fabrication we've had to do. Uh, my team, can't say enough about him. My co-driver, who was hanging around earlier, but uh, my co-driver, Eric, um, he, you know, when Dad passed away, you know, somebody had to step up, and we went. I went through a few co-drivers, um, and he's the one who ended up fitting the bill. Excellent. Yeah, which was great because he had no clue he was going to get in a race car. Um, that 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 quick little story, you know, uh, we, in Barstow, uh, my first co-driver tapped out after about 35 miles. Oh, man. And so we radio in and, and go, hey, I need a co-driver. And that poor soul, they, they said, well, you look like it, you'll fit his spare driving suit get in the car and he jumped in and uh we haven't looked back awesome yeah Excellent. worked out good Excellent. well matt again thank you very much i really appreciate it thank you for having me man yeah, i really enjoy it appreciate it yeah, absolutely thank you guys thanks for tuning in and uh we'll catch you at the next race don't forget to hit that share like and uh comment on this thanks so much